What's going on guys? Welcome back to the shop. In the last episode, I told you guys that there was a couple of issues with my motor uh, connecting rods. We thought there was going to be a bigger mishap with the cylinder heads. We got all that stuff sorted out. So we're back in here today. Going to be hanging out with John for a little bit, capturing some more footage. Uh, the last couple of things that we have to do to the engine is we have to line home the block, balance the crankshaft, and get the new connecting rods and stuff set up. So after we get that done, We'll basically be ready to take the engine home and start macking it up in the Datsun. So let's get here in the shop, have some fun, check this stuff out. For those of you already subscribed to the channel, will remember that in a previous engine building episode, we cut short due to an issue with the connecting rods I had that came with the motor. Reason being that the ovality of the inner bores were beyond specification. This issue not only kept us from finishing up the rods, but it prolonged other things like balancing the crankshaft. But I'll get to more on that shortly. Now yes, I could have ran with those rods, but we've gone this far already and it seemed very pointless to skip such a small step. This also gave me an opportunity to go ahead and make a slight upgrade to Gen 4 LS rods versus the Gen 3 that I had previously gotten which in retrospect are a slight upgrade and they are beefier than the previous. Paired with ARP2000 connecting rod bolts and a set of fresh sealed power pistons, I'm pretty confident and I can guarantee that the overall prolonged life of this motor to be quite exceptional. After all of this madness, we could finally move on to doing the task I've been dying to do for quite some time, and that's balancing the crankshaft. What you see here is a simple balance card indicating the weight of the piston with and without its other components like the rods, the pins, rings, and locks. When doing this process, the first thing you want to do is locate the lightest pin of the group, zero the scale, and then find out what the weight of the rest of the pistons are in comparison to the original. There are tolerances for this according to John, but he likes to stay within a tenth of a gram for each of the pistons. Now you would think that buying a brand new set of pistons from a pretty reputable brand like Sealed Power would yield those weights being roughly that close, but we did have to get some of the pistons shaved down about one to two grams. After the material from the pistons had been shaved, we moved on to weighing the other components like the locks, rings, and pins. And after that, all that was left basically to do was to set up the scale so that we could measure the rods themselves. The concept here is roughly the same as the pistons where you want to have the weight roughly the same across the board. So we did have to shave down a little bit of material on each of the pistons, getting them closer with every pass. Do you guys feel like this is a bunch of tedious tasks at this point? Well, believe me, it is. I didn't even really know that there were this many steps when putting a crankshaft together, but the last thing to do was just to build bob weights for balancing. This process did take a couple of hours, but after finally being done, we proceeded to put the crankshaft on the balancing machine and, well, from here, I'm not even really going to try to explain this. John worked his voodoo magic, and I don't really have any way to explain this to you guys. I have no clue what's going on. The only thing that I really can say about this process is that he's using the drill press here to remove material from the crankshaft so that it is properly balanced. All right guys, I promise that we're almost there. The last task that we have to do before the engine goes home is just lie and hold the block. Remember guys, I'm not a machinist, so I'm gonna do my best to explain this to the best of my ability. John's son, Ryan, starts by setting up the bore dial indicator to measure all of the main caps. After he's gotten the measurement that he needs, he writes it on the block, and from there, the next step is just to remove the main caps and clean the surfaces. I'll be honest, I did forget the actual reasoning for chamfering the edges of the main bearing seats, but I'm sure one of you keyboard warriors out there is gonna know the answer to that question. The one thing I do recall is grinding down the surface of the main caps flat so that they seat flush against the block itself. 
The other reasoning for removing material from the underside of the cap is to get the bores to the correct spec. To ensure that the measurements are right, Ryan must torque down every cap back to GM's specifications, checking each and every one of them again with the bore dial indicator. I quickly learned by watching this being done that it's definitely a developed skill set, and you are only taking off thousands of material with every little given pass that you do. Once all of the main caps and the thrust bearing cap have been cleaned and machined down to their desired spec, it's time to put the mandrel through the engine block and hone it. And in case you're wondering, that giant pipe thing going through the engine? Yeah, that's the mandrel. Just know that this is a very long and tedious process that consists of honing, flip, honing, flip, honing, and flipping again. And you literally have to do this 10 to 15 times to get the line home perfect. Cause you're only taking off very minute amounts of material with every pass that you do. All right guys, we are officially done. The LS is in the back of the trunk, finally getting to take it home. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of you know, days, weeks, you know, whatever. I will get it up on the engine hoist, get it down into the engine bay just for mock up, kind of see what it looks like. Obviously, yank it right back out because I have a lot more work to do in the engine bay, but it's done. Completely redone, remachined, rebuilt, top to bottom. I mean, I don't know. I'm excited right now, guys. This, this, this is something I feel like I've been waiting for for, well, probably since October of last year, which is going on four months now. Yeah, I'm excited. LS is done, guys. Let's get it home. So one last thing, guys. If you're enjoying this content, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe. Share this video with somebody. I know if you've made your way to my channel in any kind of way, you're probably a gearhead and probably interested in cars. And even if the Datsun thing is not for you or the V8 thing is not for you, share this video. Put it on Facebook groups or wherever you guys want to put it. I'm sure somebody out there is going to find the, this information somewhat useful to them. So yeah, hit the buttons. Help out the channel. All right, guys, finally got the engine home. Uh, I know it looks like it's just the block. I have all the other components, the pistons, the cylinder heads, the crankshaft, oil pan, all that other stuff. It's all pushed off to the side and some boxes of the things that are just, you know, stuff that I brought home from the machine shop. But everything is done. The engine has been bored, honed, resurfaced. Everything is precision to the specification, perfect. I'm just, I'm stoked guys. I can't wait for this thing to go on the Datsun. So yeah, in the next couple episodes, maybe not the next, but future episodes, uh, I'm going to be doing an assembly of this motor. I'm gonna go into pretty good detail about how to assemble an, L an LS motor. I know there's tens of thousands of those already on the internet, but I wanna do one. I wanna do one for you guys that are Datsun enthusiasts that probably aren't thinking about this build. 
I also just want to do one for myself. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. And man, I'm just excited. I, I know this probably isn't the greatest way of showing it, but my level of excitement is through the roof. I'll catch you guys in the next one.